We often think of the peninsula of Baja California as a vast desert, yet there's throughout the spine of mountains that runs down the peninsula, there are these islands of much more lush and green vegetation. And here at the southern end of the peninsula, there's a very tropical forest surrounding me. And you can see behind me palm trees and all sorts of more tropical species. So we're here on this binational, multidisciplinary expedition studying all different aspects of this region and one of the things that's so exciting is that really it's very little known. We don't know much about the diversity of this region and we're finding several new species to science, both of insects, of plants, some really unusual mammal and reptile populations, so it's an exciting place to study. Well, I'm pleased about the collection that we got. I mean, considering it's very difficult to net, you know, in the weather that we had, and and we got some nice resident local breeders and some migrants. We didn't. We got. We didn't really get the, the endemic birds that we wanted, but there were not really many at the peak that we wanted. The last hundred years, mammalogists have had it easy. They've been able to use baited traps in order to catch their rodents. Um, here, we de developed these long fences. A um, lot of work to install this trap, where the lizards hit the fence and then come into our traps. It's called pitfall trap array. And it's um, our new technology for sampling uh, lizards and snakes. <laughs> Yeah, so I like to collect in a particular way to associate the insects with the plants that I'm collecting off of uh, because it gives us a feel of the ecology of, of the area that we're studying. We get to understand the association between the insects that might specialize on certain plants. And it's also one of the benefits of having this be a multidisciplinary expedition because John Redman, our curator of botany, can identify the plants. I can identify the insects that eat those plants and we learn a little bit more that way. The entire description of the living world is based on specimens. And so if you want to know anything about the living world, you have to be able to study it some way. And this is the way we study it. We have a lesser long-nosed bat. We just got this bat out of this cave. This is a nectar-feeding species. Um, they like to feed on the flowers of cordon and agave and other columnar cacti that have flowers. Um, they have a very long tongue that they use to get the nectar out. Um, this is a bat that's actually federally endangered in the United States. And so with, down here we have these abandoned mines and they serve as roosts for this species and others. And these would be very important roost sites in this area for this species. Los murciélagos son los únicos mamíferos capaces de volar. Son el segundo grupo más diverso después de los roedores. La diversidad es en cuanto a formas y el tipo de alimentación que tienen. En mis manos tengo un ejemplar de una especie que se alimenta de néctar, néctar de las flores. En este caso podemos ver que su rostro es alargado y tiene una lengua muy larga el cual le permite tomar el néctar en el interior de las flores. Tan tan. Entomology, arachnology, uh, the fields of insects and spiders and things like that. And what I find fascinating about these guys is the great variety. So far, scientists have identified about a million species. We have maybe another three million to identify, and each one is so unique. So all insects have to be pinned through the right side of their thorax. And what you do is you set your pin and you pierce it only a little bit. You don't want to go all the way through. You want to look at it and make sure it's level this way and this way, like both ways. And then you put it here through, and then you push all the way through, and now it's at the right height. 
and you just put it in your box. I'm forming an X um, to prop up the abdomen. I'm gonna cross these two just so it dries and it's level and it's not drooping down. Bueno, pues podemos ver que, que es un poco, bueno, es claro eh, su coloración este, a comparación de otro tipo de, de peromiscus que podemos encontrar también por acá. There are two species of euphorbia here. This is euphorbia dentosa with dentate margins on the leaves and the flowers and euphorbia polycarpa with smooth edges on the leaves and the flowers. Meremia más. Pulsera microfila. Ah. Tiene bastante cobertura, entonces debe ser. Ajá. De todo. Cubre como. 10%, un 2. Eh, esta planta que ustedes ven, eh, que es muy difícil de extinguir en el matorral, es una cactácea, aunque no lo crean. Eh, se diferencia de las otras que tienen espinas, que esta presenta hojas y también con espinas. Es un grupo muy primitivo y cercano a los opuntias del grupo nopales y choyas. ¿Por qué collect? Um, to improve our knowledge of an area like this where we don't have many collect, we have no collection knowledge. It was a black hole in our our collections. The voucher is just a rumor. That's right. <laughs> I like that. Say that again. Say it again. Because a report without a voucher is just a rumor. It's just anecdotal information unless we can actually go back and look at the specimens and prove what something is and compare it to other. Uh, specimens that we have. It's important to look at these things. I mean, I think as a as a um, as a species, we are really interested in what's here and how our impacts might be changing the natural vegetation, or how climate change might be changing what's actually here. And there's no way to to actually quantify that unless we have specimens there to look at change over time. So. Uh, the reason why we collect is because there's a lot of information associate, associated with natural history specimens and uh, and we are, I feel like as a, uh, as a member of a natural history museum, we actually do exactly what those two words say. We're into natural history. We preserve natural history. Those areas, the reason why those two elements, time and range, are important is because we can look at change over time in those distributions. So say there was an endangered species that used to occur very broadly but now is very restricted. We can now use that information to reintroduce species into uh, areas because we know where they were in the past and that's a good indicator that they'd probably like to be there again in the present. Pues porque me gustan, son organismos muy eh, maleables, que los puedes mantener en cautiverio, eh, son muy bonitos, hay una diversidad muy eh, enorme dentro de las morfologías de, estos ara de las arañas, y uh, porque son fácilmente colectables, <risa> <risa> son fácilmente colectables, y porque pues eh, no necesitas mucho dinero para ah. este <risa> estudiarlas, solamente un microscopio, alcohol y tubitos. Eso es todo, muy fácil. <risa>